Hi, good morning. Today we're starting a new phase in our winter renovations. We're doing some work on this pond. For a lot of years, the canopy at the top has been looking a bit tired. It's quite tatty. So we're gonna to start today and we're gonna put a new roof on it. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to drain the pond and get the fish out. So we'll get started on that right away. Normally, this pond would be stocked up with an impressive selection of koi. It's where we keep our largest fish. But almost all of the stock was sold off before we shut down for winter. So, we only have a few koi to move out. In our quarantine room, we have several tanks standing empty at the moment. The largest is nearly 1,600 gallons, and it will be ideal. The koi will be stored in here for a few weeks whilst we carry out the work on the pond. Before doing any work on a pond, it's a very good idea to unplug everything. Not only is this safer, but it can prevent your pumps from running dry and getting damaged. To keep the plugs dry, I bag them up in plastic bags. Our main pond is connected to a waste water drain. We can crack open a few ball valves and the water level will gradually drop down until the pond is about half full. It's always handy to have this ability. It's very convenient when you want to empty the pond. But it would not be safe to have a pond set up in such a manner where the entire pond could accidentally drain to waste. To empty any further, we need to pump out the remaining water. A small submersible pump lowered into the bottom drain sump does the job perfectly. When all the water was out, I shifted my attention to the canopy. The old netting has been deteriorating and is full of holes. The plastic panelling across the front of the canopy has cracked and is letting a lot of water through. This is a job that we had planned to complete back in March, but it did not get done because of Covid. I brought in some sheets of plywood and lifted them up onto the top of the canopy. Matthew then climbed up onto the top of the roof. Matthew spread the sheets out and used them to distribute his weight. Then he used a claw hammer and bolster chisel to lift the old wooden latting that was holding down the netting. The net had to be ripped off in pieces. All of the old nails needed pulling out or knocking down flat. The easiest thing was just to drop all the waste down through the gaps, rather than trying to bag it up on the roof. The net across the front section was hanging down, so I was able to just reach up, grab it and tear it off. As I was pulling it down, you could see the entire structure swaying from side to side. And Matthew was a little bit unnerved, so he didn't get too close to the edge. I then bundled all of the waste into a large muck tub and gave everywhere a good sweep up. Everything was going well and it was very nice to see the canopy cleared of all that horrid netting. The timbers were actually in better shape than I had thought, so we decided that there was no need to replace these. I didn't think that there was any danger of a collapse, 
but just to be on the safe side, we decided to put up some scaffolding. It's better to be safe rather than sorry. The scaffolding would half the fall if someone fell through the gaps in the timbers. I noticed how much the timber had become discoloured with green algae, so this was the perfect time to give them a good clean up. Notice my improvised pressure washer extension. I can still feel that freezing cold water running down the back of my neck. We're not going to use netting again. We're actually going to go for a solid roof. This will prevent a lot of the glare on the water and hopefully dramatically reduce the dreaded blanket weed. Whilst I was off work for a couple of days, Matthew prepped some plywood to sheet over the roof. He got some exterior black paint and rolled it on. We are going to fiberglass over these boards eventually, but the underside will be visible. When I got back, we started sheeting down with the ply. The first few sheets were a bit awkward. There wasn't much room to work. Stuart measured and cut the sheets so that they would finish on the timbers. I secured them down with screws. It might surprise a lot of people that we are doing this solid roof, but I am certain that it will be nice for the customers when they are viewing the fish. They will also be able to stand underneath and shelter under the canopy and not get drenched. The solid roof should also help to keep some heat in in the winter. The more that we got covered, the easier it got to move around. A plunge saw with its track makes cutting quick and easy. The structure became stiff and we started working with a lot more confidence. The edges of the roof are shaped and we needed some unusual shapes cutting, but none of this was hard to do. Any small gaps will be filled with the fiberglass on the top. When we had done, I gave it all a good sweep off and cleared all the tools away. It came together very nicely and I was more than satisfied. I am expecting it to work really well. It won't be long before the new season is here and we have a lot more work to do. So keep a look out for more videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Take care from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.